words that come into your mind when I say conservation to you. Keep those words in your mind as I talk through my presentation. I'm going to ask you to do one more thing. If you have a Kenya shilling coin or a note, take it out of your wallet or your pockets and just hold it in the palm of your hands. <coughs> some young Kenyan ladies come and visit me in my camp up in northern Kenya. They'd come to visit a conservation project camp. They came out of their car and they looked around and said, what a great view, where's the swimming pool? And I said to them, there's no swimming pool here in our camp. And they said, oh, okay, could you show us to our rooms, please? I said, I can't show you to your rooms, but I can show you the one tent that you're sharing. They looked horrified. We can't stay in a tent. The animals are going to get us. No, 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 this is too scary for us. And I said, don't worry, you'll be fine. I'll take you to your tent and there's no problem. They looked a bit scared, pulled out their phones, and suddenly realized their phones didn't work. What's wrong? And I said, welcome to the bush. Five days later, these young ladies had really understood what conservation was all about. And it really got me thinking back to my early days as a conservationist. My first job was working with the Kenya Wildlife Service here in Nairobi. And I spent a year working with an incredible team of rangers and educational professionals. They loved their work and I got so inspired and that's when I realized I wanted to do conservation. One of my jobs at KWS was to talk to university students. They'd come to listen, about, listen to lectures about conservation. And I was always asked a number of questions at the end of the lecture. There was a running theme in these questions. One of the questions was, is conservation really for us to do? Is it a hobby? Is it something we do for a weekend and then we get a serious job? Do we volunteer forever? Is conservation something outsiders come and do for us Kenyans? It really got me thinking, and I, it, I thought back to those early days, about what do Kenyans really think conservation is? I live and work up in Samburu in northern Kenya. Together with my team, I run a lion conservation project called Iwaso Lions. We're named after this amazing river the Iwaso Nero River. Why is it important to do lion conservation? Why are we there? Why, am I, why have I dedicated my life to protecting lions up in Samburu? The reality is lions are in serious trouble. Their numbers are declining rapidly. Across Africa, there's been a 43% reduction in lion numbers just in the last 20 years. There's only about 20,000 lions left in the whole of Africa. Only six countries in Africa have over 1,000 lions. And we are very lucky that Kenya is one of them. We've got just about 2,000 lions. But that's it. It's a very small number. Together with my team, we work in an unfenced landscape in northern Kenya three protected areas, Samburu, Buffalo Springs, and Shaba National Reserves, which are spectacular parks in this region. But our focus is working around these parks, in community lands, conservancies, where people, wildlife, and the people's livestock are all sharing the land. About 70% of Kenya's wildlife lives outside protected areas. So when I started this project 11 years ago, I had a few key questions. I knew that lions are wide-ranging species. They need to move in and out of protected areas. They need huge areas to roam in. I wanted to understand, can lions actually live outside and thrive outside protected areas? 
Coexistence is a word we hear often. Is coexistence actually possible? Can you have lions and people living alongside one another? And when I say alongside, I don't mean people walking with lions. I mean people, livestock, and wildlife all sharing the same land. I had these key questions I was trying to understand 11 years ago. And this is what brought me to start this project. Coexistence, is it possible? I needed to understand what do lions need in order to survive with people? What are their challenges? This picture was taken a year ago and shows you what northern Kenya looks like sometimes. A very dry, arid landscape. A landscape that often faces a lot of droughts, failure of rain. Lions are trying to live in such a landscape. But the problem is they're running out of space. More development comes in, takes away land from lions and other wildlife. They're trying to move from one safe place to another safe place, but they're struggling. They're struggling to find food. But their food is struggling to find food. As you can see in this picture, there's so little vegetation. There's no grass cover. There is severe land degradation in northern Kenya. So when lions are struggling to find food, they're struggling to go from one place to another. Often, they come into contact with the local communities. And unfortunately, sometimes lions will attack cows, camels, donkeys, sheep and goats belonging to the local Samburu communities. Yet we must understand that these livestock, the cows and camels, mean so much to the pastoralists. It's their life, it's their livelihood. So when a lion comes along and kills their cow, of course, there's so much anger, resentment, and fury. And often, lions are tracked and shot in retaliation. In some places in southern Kenya, they're poisoned. This is a huge problem. And the biggest challenge we have faced over the last decade. So we needed to try and change this. And I was very lucky from day one when I started this project, I had a young warrior, Jenneria Lekilele, who's in this audience today. He came to me and he said, if we want to stop people killing lions, we've got to engage the young warrior demographic. Because these are the warriors who are most commonly implicated when it comes to lion killing. So let's change this. Let's bring them on board. Let's encourage them to become conservationists, he said. He started off with a team of five warriors. Now he works with a team of 20 warriors who are scattered throughout northern Kenya. We haven't changed their way of life. Whilst they are out protecting their livestock, they are keeping an eye on the lions. They go out, Jenneria and his team, and monitor lions in vehicles. They know them individually. This is not just a lion in Samburu. This is Nanai, this is Nabolo, this is Naramat, this is Nashipai. They've been named by the community. They're individually known by the community. Their ears are drawn, the whisker spots are drawn, and each of the team have their own favorite lions. They go out on foot, and they really keep an eye on where lions are. And this is really important when we're trying to reduce conflict. When our team know lions are in a certain area, they will communicate that message to the livestock herders. Don't take your cows to these areas. Don't take your goats and your camels. Stay away, graze in a different area. They're preventing conflict from happening. But when conflict does happen, our team is so quick at responding to make sure that the livestock owners don't retaliate and shoot the lions. One of the first things our warriors wanted when we started this program was education. These are young men who've never been to school. They don't know how to read and write. So they started a Sunday school, and now eight years later, when, since this program has been running, all of our warriors can read and write. They are protecting lions from the benefits they receive, including education. But they are protecting lions because this is part of their culture. They've lived with lions for generations. This is so important to them. It is their heritage. We've evaluated this program to really see 
What is the impact our Warrior Watch program is having on the lion population and on the communities? The results are so impressive. Not only have the warriors felt more socially and politically empowered as a direct result of this program, but they've also transformed attitudes amongst the communities. People's perceptions towards carnivores are much better as a result of the warriors' work. This program <coughs> works. This program saves lions. I was born and raised here in Nairobi, just down the road. And I was very lucky as a child to go on safari with my parents. My dad would pack us up in his little white Datsun and take us off to Kenya's most amazing national parks and reserves, Masai Mara, Amboseli, Nakuru. These were parks I grew up visiting. I was only eight years old when my dad took me to Samburu and I saw my first cheetah and I never forgot that moment. I kept saying, I want to do this. I want to drive around and look for cheetahs all day. Yet I was one of the lucky Kenyan children. Most children in Kenya don't get to go on safari. They don't get to experience wildlife in a positive way, the way I did when I was a child. They see cheetahs chasing their goats. They see elephants chasing someone. They see a lion dragging a camel. None of these experiences are positive. Yet, it's these children who are the next wardens, the next rangers, the next conservationists. We have a program called Lion Kids Camps where we bring children on board and give them positive wildlife experiences. We work with not only students, but the young herding children, children who are out with livestock every single day. They're often made to feel that they're not important. Yet, they are the most important when it comes to conservation because they see lions every single day as they're taking their goats through a certain area. We work with these children, we educate them, we talk to them about conservation. Here is Yeselai, one of our field officers, who is talking to these young, young herders about the importance of a small conservation area. This conservation area is outside the protected areas, but was set aside by the community for wildlife. So Yeselai is talking to these children saying, don't take your cows and your goats into these protected areas. Keep them just for wildlife. I love the honesty in these children because we ask them, how many of you have encroached into the parks? How many of you have taken your cows and your goats into all these amazing reserves? They all put their hand up. We've taken our cows in, we've taken our goats in, but no, no one's ever told us why we shouldn't. No one's ever told us why it's important not to encroach into these amazing areas. But now we understand, they say. These children have also admitted to killing dick dicks, squirrels, birds. They say again, we do this because no one's ever told us why we shouldn't. We never realized the importance of these animals. I remember one day after our Lion Kids Camp, I was dropping some of the children home, and I had a young boy called Freddy next to me. And I'm a very slow driver. That's the one thing I didn't pick up from my dad, who was a very fast driver. And I was driving along, and in the distance was a black-bellied bustard, a medium-sized bird crossing the road. And this little boy, Freddy, leapt onto me. Don't kill the bird, he said. I almost killed the bird because I was in shock after he jumped on me. <laughs> but it was so interesting for me to see that five days ago, here was this kid who had said he had killed so many birds, squirrels and dick dicks, and now five days later he realized why it's important not to do that. Most of these children in Kenya have never seen a lion. I took these two kids out a couple of years ago, Saiwana and Ltonos. They were sitting next to me. And I knew Goret, our maneless male, was in the bushes. You can see him at the back under the tree. And I, sh I told the two girls, I said, look on the left, there's a lion. And they turned around and they looked and they came down in the car and they were whispering, Simba, Simba, Simba. They were so excited. And they turned around and that was their expression, an expression of pure joy. These kids were so excited to see their first ever lion. How do, we accept, how do we expect children to do conservation, to protect when they've never seen? 
it's so important to show our Kenyan children what is so special about Kenya. There's no one that really highlights this more than this young boy on the left of the picture, Junior. Junior came to our, our first line kids camp about five years ago. And at the end of the camp, he said to me and Janaria, who's on the right, he said, I love lions now. I'm going to do conservation. I'm, I want to be a lion warrior just like you. I'm going to spend every weekend and every holiday with you. We didn't quite believe him. We thought, oh, he's just saying that. He's just had a good five days. But we should have believed him because he has spent every single weekend with us. He has spent every single holiday with us for the last four years. I call him Generia's shadow because wherever Generia is, Junior follows. Generia calls him traffic because as Generia is driving along trying to find lions, Junior is standing in the middle of the road with his hands out. <laughs> Let me in, he says. He is not going to be a future conservationist. We often say children are the next generation of conservationists. They're not the next generation. They are a new generation. And he's such a great example of a young boy who has already been on patrol with the warriors. He's got his favorite lions. He's monitored them. He cries when we lose one. He loves lions. There was a group feeling rather left out in our work. We'd worked with children for so many years. We'd worked with amazing warriors for a number of years. The Samburu women were feeling a little bit neglected. And they'd march into our camp once a week. Where are we? in conservation. Why aren't you involving us? We want our own lion program as well. And so I said to the women, go for it. Start your own program. We will support you. Design it, create it, begin it. And so the women came up with their own program that they created called Mama Simba. Of course, one of the first things they wanted was education as well. These women have never learned how to read and write. They've never been to school. They started their own little bush school where they go to school four times a week, reading and writing. The program is run by these two incredible Samburu women. Parasori on the right, Mantelli on the left. Parasori said to me a couple of years ago, we Samburu women believe that wildlife belongs to us, yet we're never involved in conservation. Wildlife was taken away from us. But now, because of Mama Simba, Wildlife have come back to us. A blanket has been lifted over my eyes, is what she said. And the incredible Mentelli, only 25 years old. A year and a half ago, she came to me and she told me off. She got very angry with me. She said, you're not letting me do my work. I can't get anywhere. Jenneria is so busy in his car, stopping people killing lions. Latoya is so busy monitoring Nana and her cubs in the park. You're so busy on the computer. I can't get anywhere. I need to work with other women. I need to talk to them about conservation, she said. So you're going to have to teach me how to drive. This is a woman who's never been to school. And to have a Samburu woman in this region to drive was not heard of. So we said, all right, we're going to teach you how to drive. So we taught her on the local runway near our camp. And I had about six lessons with her. And I realized Mentelli is a natural driver. So she went off to Nanyuki and spent a month in driving school there, learning how to drive in a different language, because she doesn't speak much Swahili and almost no English. She persevered through a very difficult month. It was cold. It was challenging. But she did it. And she got her driving license. The first lady in this region. And a year, ago, a year ago, we surprised her with a little Suzuki. Mentelli's incredible. She drives around every day in her little Suzuki, monitoring lions, working with other women, talking to them about conservation, working with children, and playing conservation games with them. And a year ago, she said to me, I'm moving to camp because that's where the car is. So now she lives with us. Her fame has reached mythical levels. Women from far away have heard about there's a Samburu woman driving around. And they've called her up and said, 
a human telly. We've heard about you, but we don't know whether you really exist. So we're going to hire a lorry and come and see you to see whether you really are a person. <laughs> and they've done just that. She has shown that the impossible is now possible, which is what all the Sambu women say to her. She is an inspiration to many. This is my incredible team I live and work with every day in Samburu. A team that have dedicated their lives. They're so passionate about their work. They risk their lives to save lions. In the past 12 months, my team has stopped the killing of lions 15 times. Our lion population has tripled in the past decade. Lion conservation is about people. It's about the rangers across Kenya who are working so hard in such difficult conditions to protect our wildlife. It's about the warriors who go out to stop the killing of lions. It's about the women who've been empowered to use their voice and speak up about conservation. And it's about the children, a new generation of conservationists. We often call people the problem when it comes to conservation. We often say they're causing the conflicts. Whereas in, here's a great example where it's the people who are the solution. They've taken full ownership over their land, their wildlife, their resources. I'm often asked, Shivani, how are your lions? And I say to them, they're not my lions, they're our lions. I don't own the lions, I do own these two little guys, and they're fine. This is our camp on top of a hill in a remote part of Samburu, a spectacular landscape. There are no swimming pools, there is no telephone network, and there are no rooms. But what there is here is a team with strength, dedication, and unity to really try and make lions feel safe again. Can lions live alongside people? Our goal 11 years ago. Has it worked? Has this decade of work, has it actually made a difference to the lions? Not only has our lion population increased, the most amazing thing for us is we now have the permanent presence of lions outside protected areas. There's no one that shows this more than this beautiful lioness who is one of my favorites, Naramat. She was named by the community her name means the caring one because she's always done such a good job with her cubs. She's always looking out for the others. Naramat was born inside a protected area, but five years ago, she moved out. She lives where there's thousands of people and a lot of livestock, and she's figured out how to survive. She knows the way to survive when there's a lot of challenges and there's a lot of people. And she surprised us on numerous occasions because she shows up with cubs sometimes. She's given birth three times over the last five years and all her cubs have been raised successfully by herself. She's a true survivor. I call her a real lion. For the first time in years, we can now hear lions at night. And the reason we can hear lions at night is because they feel safer. And why do they feel safer? It's because of the people, the communities who've accepted lions, who've continued to live with lions for generations, who are working to protect them, who have taken full ownership over them. And lions are smart. They know when they're safe. And because of that, finally from our camp on top of the hill, we can hear lions at night. And every time we hear Gret, Naramat, Nanai, we know that here are lions feeling safe because of the communities. The challenges and threats towards conservation in Kenya are increasing. This is not an easy job. I'm often asked, you must have so much fun in Samburu. What a fun job conservation is. Conservation is a hard job. It is not easy, but it has to be done because these threats and challenges are vast and they're constantly increasing. We have got to come together to protect what is so important in Kenya. We have incredible parks and reserves, 
beautiful landscapes, communities who are living alongside wildlife. It is our duty, it is our responsibility as Kenyans to protect our heritage. There is so much Kenyans can do to, to get involved in conservation. Not everyone needs to uproot their lives, go up on top of a hill and start a conservation project, although I would love that if there were more. You can make conservation a part of your daily life. Even in Nairobi, notice nature. Start conservation in your own backyard. Notice the marabou stalks and the squirrels and the birds in Nairobi. Make it a daily part of your routine. Whether it's in education, schools, agriculture, business development, think about wildlife needs, especially now in light of all the development happening in Kenya. We must not forget the wildlife. They don't have voices, they can't speak, but imagine if they could. And we could hear what people have done to wildlife. We have taken away their land. And if we don't work hard as Kenyans, to really protect what is so important in this country, we will see the last lion walking away from us. At the beginning of my talk, I asked you to think of three words when I said the word conservation. I hope the three words you came up with have come up in my presentation today. If they have, that's fantastic. But if they haven't, Perhaps this is the time you should be learning more about conservation and what you can do to support it. There's so much that needs to be done for conservation. Financial support is needed. Conservation is not cheap. Conservation projects across Kenya <coughs> need financial resources. Kenya Wildlife Service, the custodians of Kenya's wildlife, needs financial resources. Ask questions. Learn about conservation, be inspired, and inspire others. I asked you to do one more thing, and that was to take out a coin or a note and put it in the palm of your hands. Please take a look at it now. Look at your note or your coin. And if you look at it, you will see our coat of arms. And on the coat of arms are two lions. As I've been talking, you have been holding two lions in the palm of your hands. It is our duty to protect Kenya's wildlife, Kenya's lions. The future of lions in Kenya is in your hands. Thank you very much. <laughs>